I'm going to be referencing a PDF document that will be available to you on Blackboard and it is called List Nav. And this is going to take you through step by step in paper form or PDF form everything that I'm doing on screen. And I just want to make sure that I'm going in the right order so that if later on you're just looking at the paper, I haven't missed any steps. So, so far we have created our unordered list with the links. And sure enough, just like I've done, here's our div tag with some links that are um, in list form inside of that. At this point now, we're ready to start creating some CSS rules that can define what this will look like. I mean, this is okay, but it's probably not going to fit your design and, and clearly not my design. So there are some minimum rules that you have to create, some properties that you must use, and then there are the variables that will give it your own sort of design finesse. So let's start out with the things that you must have in order to style this. First of all, you need the rule sort of governing the div tag itself. So um, on the PDF, it was called nav2, so just scooting back up. This whole container has the ID of nav2. It's position absolute and all of the attributes um, governing that. Now, as soon as we drew that AP div on the page, we created a style. So as I look over here, um, in Dreamweaver, in my CSS panel, my div tag is called nav, and it already has properties and attributes and so on. So only if you're really coding this by hand would you need to take that step now to make sure that the nav rule, the ID, has some, some properties attached to it. Dreamweaver, if you're starting at the same point I am, that first rule has already been written for you. Rule number two. We are creating the list, if, if we have a list, if we have a UL, an unordered list, and it happens to be within nav2, then it must have these properties. Now, remember like in the Madison College website, there are at least five different types of lists happening. There's this, there's the A to Z the one we looked at on screen, this navigation, and so on. So each one of these is in a different div tag and would have different rules applied to it. So as we are developing our list here, we're developing a specific set of rules as if we're working in this nav. So you're going to have to go through this process for each list you have on your page. I guess that's what I'm, I'm trying to say, the long and short of that. So the next rule again that I'm writing is kind of defining some properties for the list only. And these are must-haves. And these are the only properties that you need. The, the margin zero and the padding zero. Uh, my list is developing internally and that's fine. If you're working for WordPress, eventually this will have to be an external file. But um, for now I'm just going to keep on rolling internally. So I'm going to make a new CSS rule. The div tag that I'm targeting is pound nav, the ID of nav, and just the list. So I'm going to go to the box category. Padding and margin are both zeros. That's all that's needed. You'll see some subtle differences developing. Uh, now that the padding and the margin is gone, we sort of shoved the list up into the upper left-hand corner of our div. The next rule is going to affect any list item that happens to be within a list that also happens to be within our div container. So as you're going through this, think of it as a recipe. You have to do it step by step. You can't omit any of these ingredients or the recipe will not turn out right. So the next rule I'm writing is this particular one right here, except of course with my ID name. So new rule, and whenever you need to write kind of a complicated rule, just remember in Dreamweaver, always move down to the compound um, contextual selector type. So if I have a container called nav, and it has a list, which has a list item, then for this particular rule, its property is list style type 
none. And all that's going to do is remove the bullet point. Okay, so chances are you don't want that. And if you did, you could put your own bullet point in there. Okay, one more must have rule, and then you can start doing your own crazy design stuff. So the link, A stands for link. So if I have a link, which is actually part of a list item tag, which is in a list, which is in a div, so we're getting very specific now, we're going to display that as a block. Everything else is gravy. Everything else is your own design decisions. Uh, this, if you happen upon the PDF file, everything that's in yellow here, those are just my arbitrary decisions. You can make whatever decisions you want. But they're all written in this final rule ending with A. So one more rule. Compound and starting with the very general, working our way to the specific. So if I'm in the nav ID and I have a list that has a list item, which is also a link, and I know it gets really hairy and lots of um, little pieces to this, the thing I know I must have is block, display, block. So let's apply that and um, kind of acknowledge what that's doing. It's taking each one of these pieces and treating it as a separate chunk, a separate block, like a building block on our page. So now as we continue to add more attributes, um, you know, maybe I want a background color. Mm, I'd like a little more space between these. I don't like them all jumbled together. So I'll go to the box category. I'll throw a little margin on the bottom. Put 10 pixels of margin below. Okay. My text seems a little bit cramped inside, so the space that is inside of the block is referred to as padding. So maybe I'll throw in about five pixels of padding. Okay. Um, right now, the width of these is determined by the width of the div tag. So you can either adjust that or I could make sort of a blanket statement here. No, let's just have that always be 100 pixels. And my type looks pretty ugly, so I can bounce back up to the type category. Might look better if it were white. And um, clearly, at least to me, it's navigation, so I do not need the underline. So text decoration, none. Um, you know, you can continue on and on. You can put borders, you can change fonts, you can do any number of things, but it's really this particular rule, the ID followed by the UL, LI, and the A, that you're going to be making the bulk of your style decisions. Most people expect more from their navigation. They expect some acknowledgement that they've hovered over, that something is happening, that yes, this is something that I can click on. So I'm going to build in one more rule, and that will be my hover rule. And the hover rule will remember every single thing about this rule that ends with the A, the link rule. So all I really have to do is indicate what I want to be different about it. So that rule looks as follows. Pretty much the same setup. Pound nav is the um, ID that I'm targeting. And then I have a list inside of that, which has a list item, which has a link. I already have that rule. So I'm going to add hover right at the end of that. So this is what the hover rule would look like. And as I said, I really only need to indicate what's different. So I don't have to remember every decision that I made in the link rule, just what I want to be different. So let's see, maybe... Um, my text will become bold when I hover over it. Maybe it will change color when I hover over it. And maybe the background color will change as well. So not too dramatic. When I save that and preview it, or if I'm in Dreamweaver, I can go right to the live view. Hello, live view. Here we go. 
Okay, well, not very attractive. I've gone from Badgers to Packers in one fell swoop, but um, all done through some, some rule writing. Originated from a list. I'm going to make one more movie that talks about taking this list and making it into a horizontal one, and that will be next.